Good morning. It is Monday, March 25th. Welcome to the Panther News Network. I'm Chaz Nolan. I'm Jalen Spike. And I'm Haley Spivey. And here's what's going on today. Government Phil Bryant signed one of the strictest abortion ban proposals into, a, into law at a Thursday morning ceremony at the Mississippi State Capitol. Senate Bill 2116 would outlaw abortion after a fetal heartbeat can be detected, which is usually around six to nine weeks into pregnancy sometimes before a woman even knows she is pregnant. It provides an exception if the pregnancy threatens a woman's life or will cause serious injury, though there is no exception in the case of incest or rape. Doctors who perform an abortion after a heartbeat is detected could see their license, could see their license suspended or face other discipline. A federal judge blocked a similar law in Kentucky last week. We think this is showing the profound respect and desire of Mississippians to protect the, san the sanctity of that unborn life whenever possible, Brian said of the legislation. It also protects, we believe, the physical and mental health of the mother. We here in Mississippi believe in protecting and defending the whole life of the child. The law is certain to be challenged in court, however, a move likely to prevent it from taking effect July 1st. A second student who survived last year's mass shooting at Majority Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, has apparently died by suicide, police confirmed. The juvenile, has n whose name has not been released, died by an apparent suicide on Saturday night, Coral Springs Police spokesman Tyler Reek told Huff Post. The deceased was a current student at the high school. Detectives and the county medical examiner's office are continuing to investigate the matter, Reek said. The student's death comes after the family of another survival, survivor of the shooting, 19-year-old Sydney Alio, confirmed Friday that she died by suicide after struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder and survival's guilt. The February 2018 shooting by a former student killed 17. Alio had been close with a friend, Mildo Parklack, at Stoneman Douglas Sr., who was fatally shot during the last year's massacre. David Hogg, who was a Parkland shooting survivor, t shared his grief on Twitter Sunday. How many more children have to be taken from us as a result of suicide for the government and school district to do anything? The 18-year-old tweeted. Broward County Public Schools did not immediately respond to the request for co comment, though the details surrounding the second student's death remain unclear. Dan Riedenberg told HuffPost that PTSD and survival's guilt can be a factor in such situations. Teens facing graduations, proms, other major life events, knowing that their friends will not be there due to the mass shooting can be really re-traumatized by life events. Riedenberg said it's important for adults, teachers, and peers to understand that youth suicide warning signs, which include changes in academic performance and statements of feeling like they don't deserve to be alive. Graffiti left during an alleged arson on the Southern California mosque early Sunday morning mentioned an attack in New Zealand that killed 50 Muslim worshipers earlier this month, authorities said. In an interview, Escondido Police Department Lieutenant Chris Lick wouldn't say what the graffiti said, though he added that local and federal authorities were investigating the incident as a hate crime. No suspects had been identified and one was injured in the fire that broke out around 3 a.m. local time at the Daru Arkham Mosque in Escondido, north of San Diego, Lick said. Lick added that worshippers staying at the mosque overnight extinguished the blaze, which caused minor damage to the building's facade, he said. And we'll be back with TV and local news right after the break. At Prairie View A&M University, we've been igniting passion in students for more than 140 years. It's about inspiration. It's about global influence. It's about self-expression and individuality. It's about trailblazing a path of excellence. It's about engaging in the greater community. Above all, it's about helping you realize your dreams. Ignite your passion. Experience Prairie View A&M University. And welcome back. The Frisco Police Department is investigating a homicide suicide attempt that left one child dead and a woman hospitalized. Frisco 911 responded to a welfare concern around 5.55 p.m. Saturday in the 1500 block of Preacher's Lane. When the Frisco Police and Fire Department arrived, the two were in a parked car and the child was pronounced dead on the scene. The condition of the woman hospitalized is unknown. 
Anyone with information on the incident can contact the Frisco Police Department at 972-292-6010 or send an anonymous tip by texting Frisco PD at 847 411 or by downloading the Frisco P PD app. A woman died from her injuries after her own two dogs attacked her outside of an animal hospital in Irving Saturday morning, police say. Police shot and killed the dogs when they arrived because the pets would not allow authorities to come close to the owner, police say. Police said that the dog owner was transported to the Parkland Hospital in Dallas, where she later died. The woman was identified by Irving police Saturday afternoon as 33-year-old Joanna Natalie Villanland. Ivy police confirmed that the dogs were both pit bulls. The dogs were in quarantine at O'Connor Animal Hospital to be tested for rabies after they got loose and bit someone earlier in the week, according to Ivy Police Department. The animal hospital allowed the woman to visit the dogs during the week while her pets were in quarantine, police said. Police said animal hospital staff told them that the dogs attacked the woman when she took them on a walk in an enclosed area behind the building. When someone noticed that the woman was injured or on the ground, police said that the dogs would not allow anyone to go near her. The scenario repeated itself when Ivan Fire and police officials both arrived, which led to the police shooting the dogs. Investigators say a Houston police officer has been charged with murder in the fatal shooting of his librarian wife. Parallel police said in a statement that the body of 52-year-old Belinda Hernandez was located Saturday by a relative at her home in the Houston suburbs. Her husband, 56-year-old Sergeant Hilario Hernandez, was arrested later that day some 230 miles away in Kingsville, Texas. Police say the victim was a librarian at Shady Crest Elementary School. Parallel Police Officer Jason Wells said Sunday that Hernandez is being returned to Brazoria County from Clareburg County where he was arrested. Wells was unable to provide information on bond or an attorney representing Hernandez. Clareburg County Sheriff's officials didn't immediately return messages Sunday. Houston Police also didn't immediately return a message for comment. And the Parallel Police Department said that the Houston Police Department is cooperating with the ongoing investigation. Parallel ISD released a statement on the death of its Shady Crest Elementary librarian. Parallel ISD is deeply saddened to learn of the death of one of our employees, Shady Crest Elementary librarian Belinda Hernandez. Mrs. Hernandez was a beloved, longtime employee who worked for Parallel ISD for 15 years. Interested in becoming a PAL for the 2019 through 2020 school year? Find out more about the organization at the general meeting today at 6:30 in JJ Auditorium. And we'll be back after this commercial break. Traditions are not made overnight. They are created through a legacy of excellence and a commitment to something much greater. For more than 135 years, Prairie View A&M University has provided students with a strong academic foundation, a unique college experience, and the opportunity to make their mark on the world. This is a place where friendships are formed, discoveries are made, and dreams are realized. This is Prairie View A&M University. Our tradition, your opportunity. And welcome back. Today we have a pretty warm day today with a low of 52 and a high of 81. Today is National Medal of Honor Me Today is National Medal of Honor Day, excuse me. And we would like to say congratulations to all of the Prairie View Panthers that made the Dean's List. And we hope you guys enjoy the Honors Convocation this week. Are you guys going to some places on the list? Yes. Rocky. Oh. Yeah, nice Congratulations to Rocky. Congratulations to our very own Haley who made the list. Hard work and dedication. Yes, stick yes. with it. Stick with <laughs> it. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Panther News Network and we will see you on Wednesday.